Uh, hey, it's Adam with Indy 88, joined by Jeffrey, co-founder of Arts and Crafts. Congratulations, such a big day for you. Yeah, thanks so much, Adam. It's, uh, it's a bit humbling, you know? You put all this time and thought into how best to celebrate uh, 10 years of amazing music, and you think, well, you know what, let's bring everyone together, have everyone play, and the weather gods seem to be on our sides, and people are having a nice time, so. This is a more elaborate party than most 10-year-olds get, so <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> well, we have a bounty castle. <laughs> we have hula hoops. And hula hoops. Yeah. Um, so take, take me back if you can. What was the catalyst to the foundation of Arts and Crafts 10 years ago? Uh, you know, I mean, it started like Brendan Canning from Broken introduced me to Kevin Drew as they were building Broken Social Scene. I was working at a major, uh, and they made what was to become their breakthrough record, You Forgot It in People, and brought me in and played it for me. And I mean, I was, I was just in. I knew I wanted to work with this band and that music. and. So Kevin and I hatched this crazy plan to uh, to start a company wrapped around them. So we started Arts and Crafts. For the first few years, it was Broken Social Scene and the projects related to Broken. Lucky for us, that meant bands like Jason Collette, Apostle of Hustle, Stars, Feist. By the time we went outwards, it had been four years, and and we'd built an amazing team and, and started to build a reputation. So. What was the most difficult part within the past 10 years? Was there ever times where it didn't seem worth it or it was just really hard? Well, you know, I mean, look, I mean, I think doing anything well is never easy. Doing everything right is can often be a longer road. So, you know, there's certainly been times when we've taken the, you know, the road a little less traveled. And so that's, you know, always tricky. And then, you know, it's friends and it's business, it's art and it's commerce. But even if I reverse engineer the name Arts and Crafts now, I wish I thought of it then, like, it's kind of a balance of that. Like, we live between the intersection of art and commerce, and we want to put the same care and attention into the business of music as we feel our artists put into its creation. So. Outside of a celebration like today, which is fantastic, what, what was your biggest success over the past decade? A success has been to learn how to learn and learn how to roll with a, a changing climate and a changing landscape. Uh, seeing our bands play all over the world is, has always been a, an amazing achievement. It feels incredible. And then doing stuff in the city, and the city that has we all, most of us call home, and seeing what Toronto's, how supportive Toronto has been, and how great the community has been, that's been a, that feels like a real achievement. Let's talk about the change in landscape from 2003 to 2013. How have you seen the musical environment change in Toronto specifically? It's an irony. like. It's never been easier to make music, it's never been easier to distribute music, so everyone's doing it. Uh, consequently, it's harder and harder to build an audience around that. Uh, and every day that changes a little more. Well, as a music fan myself and surrounded by thousands of others, we say thank you for bringing what you have to Toronto, to Canada, and to the world. Um, congratulations on 10 amazing years, and we all look forward to what the next 10 bring. Oh, thanks so much, Adam. I mean, and, and I can't wait for you guys to launch. It's amazing what what this station's gonna be for this city, and uh, it's gonna be fun to work together for the next 10 years. We're gonna be good friends.